everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Um, big welcome to all the new subscribers. Um, I had a request for this video. I'm just going to do a little bit of a walk around, but I will show you a, a project I'm uh, going to start on. Um, I don't think it'll be that much, but just a cool motor and a very practical motor for around these parts. Um, so I'm just going to give you a, a quick walk around of uh, what I got going on. The season has started for sure. It's uh, gotten really busy here. Um, so uh, I've been going at it pretty strong. But uh, I'll give you a quick walk around, show you some of the stuff that's come in, some of the stuff that I'm working on, and and uh, just how how we're going around here. So, uh, all right, I just finished up that Honda. Uh, it was just a water pump and all. It was an extra long sail shaft motor. Manual start, manual choke. Um, runs pretty good now. Like I said, nothing eventful there. Just just a water pump change and did a little cleaning on it. Um, here's one. It's a Honda 9.9. .9. Manual everything. I just did a little washing on it and cleaning on it. Um, and I own this engine. It was traded for a two-stroke. Um, guy just got tired of dealing with the four-stroke aspect of being able to lay it down and the um, portability issues and so forth that comes with four-strokes. Uh, as you can see up under there, I got quite a few things uh, stored under there, mostly parts motors. But uh, a lot of good stuff. You can't really see it, but, well, maybe you can. I've got a bunch more along the front wall there. Um, here's some outboards, some that you've seen before, some that you haven't. That little 8 right there is a Tahatsu. It's got busted lower clams. I just took in that 40 uh, horsepower right there with the silver colored lower unit and there's a whole stack of them there that most of the all the ones from the Evan Rude 70 down there on are uh, running engines ready to be sold or whatever most of these here that are closer to me need work um, there's a little 18 that I've got to get to yet here's one that came in for repair slant bar basic tune up he wants the lower uh, oil changed in the gear box he wants a tune up um, which if you know anything's about these first generation fitch and stuff you got to well i guess all the e-tech and fitch type motors you have to index the spark plugs and so forth interesting choice of props there that's a plastic four blade that's an aluminum three blade but uh, and then the tilt on the starboard engine is going slower than the other one and uh, then he wants just tune up he says the the starboard engines also leaking a little oil so I'll start blowing it back from the carb I guess overall nice looking boat um, yeah so so I'll start on that this late afternoon. Get him going on out of here. What else we got? Fella brought in a log splitter that unfortunately he said he tried to get it going, took off the carburetor, don't think it went back together right, pulled off the coil, thinks it's the wrong coil, blah blah blah. Here we go. This is a Tahatsu four-stroke. Came in laying on its wrong side, bonnet full of oil. Um, who knows? Came in from a remote location from a hunting guide. Let the float plane go by. Um, these are just odds and ends that I try and get rid of. They come off motors, those, those hydrofoils. Some people swear by them. Some people claim they don't work. So I have no opinion one way or another because I really think it's boat hull specific. 
and whether or not you have tilt or trim on your outboard to, as to whether they would work or add or enhance the performance of a boat. So that's an old commercial 90, that V4 there. Um, tilt and trim works on it. Engine spins over freely, missing most of its components, deciding whether I want to mess with it or not. That 88, along with its twin 88, um, both supposedly were running when they came in. And here's my stockpile of 50 commercials. And these are just miscellaneous parts motors. Um, I'll take you inside here. This is where I keep the bulk of my part supply. Going to get a little dark for a minute. Um, big basket, two stroke oil. That's my tire machine. Sorry about the lighting in here, it's not very good, but this is the bulk of my uh, parts. Those are all CDI units. Miscellaneous uh, part numbers there in these little trays are all the little pieces, compression washers, nylon bushings, uh, the little P-tube, 850s, just different things. Up there is mostly fuel filters, fuel stuff, hoses, just parts, 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 more parts, 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 parts. Up here is my propeller stash. These are mostly new propellers, um, some used up there. More parts. Just parts and parts. And, and this is all used stuff down on the bottom. So this is my main parts locker. Then I have another little conic shed over here. I keep, uh, I call it Area 51. I keep all my used stuff in there. And, uh, and that's my old boat there that I hardly ever use. My lawnmower lifts. Pneumatic jack. This is my little ramrod. I have a video of me driving and playing on that thing. I use it for lifting outboards more than anything. It's a little bitty teeny skid steer from... I, all I know is it's made in Canada. The company's still in business to this day. And that one's about 40 years old. So that's a quick overview. Now I'm going to show you the uh, project that I'm kind of working on. One that I've been wanting to get to for a while. I'm going to put this down for a second. Then I'll spin it around. Alrighty. Actually, I'll go ahead and spin it that way. and Get it set up kind of for where I want it. All right, this old engine here, I've been wanting to get to just because it's a good functional engine uh, for, the, for the guys around here that do the remote operating thing. Um, this is a good one. I'm hoping you can see it. my flashlight carburetor looks a little rough that'll probably clean up as bad as it is but uh, sorry about the noise I got a school bus out there stopping but this is an old Norseman it turns over free it's in here right now that's how it goes um, salty, dirty, but it essentially, I hope you can see the old fins down there, the old horizontal fins on it. Um, essentially that thing is just an old big twin is all, all that thing is. Um, 
and you can see the carburetor is really rough. I can bring it a little closer, I suppose. Hopefully you can see that. The carburetor is really rough on it. Um, but I have several, but that one will probably clean up. Um, I will attempt to clean it. Um, so essentially it's just an old big twin, but what makes it a very useful engine over here around our parts when these guys go to the remoter parts um, doing their hunting guiding and stuff is it's completely manual but yet it has the modern primer uh, instead of a butterfly choke it has an actual primer instead of a suction choke um, and it's not a points engine it has CDI electronic ignition on it has a tail tail on it um, has modern coils uh, but yet it don't have things like it don't have a thermostat for instance um, so that's what makes it a really uh, useful engine. Um, like I said, it's got the mo modern primer choke, one carburetor, two cylinders. So not a lot to clean if you get some funky gas in it or something. CDI electronic ignition instead of points. Um, if I remember looking at the manual, it don't even have a thermostat. So I'll come around here. And it has the modern coils. So it's essentially an upgraded big twin. It has all the stuff you would want um, as far as modern amenities, electronic ignition, coils, fuel pump. Um, but yet it has the, the, the bare bones simpleness of the old big twins. Because essentially that's what it is. It's called a Norseman. And uh, I like the look of it with the, the fins and everything. And it shifts real good. Seems to go out in and out of gear nice. So I'm going to go ahead and pop that carb off and get on this one and uh, check out my spark and stuff. And as I go through that, uh, I'll make some videos and carry along. So that's going to be all for this one. So thanks for watching.